course, it's beautiful all week. And as soon as the weekend's here, pouring down rain. And lucky me, I finally got over my sickness and was well for about two days. And now I'm sick with something else, so that's why I sound like I sound. But we are finally lifting the OBS, as I'm sure you can tell by the title of this video. But first, before we get into what we bought and the install and everything, I want to get some measurements because I want to really see how much this thing gets lifted. 31 and a half at the bottom of the fender. 31 and a half. So y'all know Larry has had the three inch spindle kit on it and it's been great. So I decided to go back with Rough Country and they make a four inch spindle kit for this thing. So here is our replacement spindles. Just beefy as crap, dude. They're freaking sick. This thing's about to transform for real, but I am real curious to see if it does give us a full four inch lift. And we will be replacing a lot of other front end components, but I do want to go a little bit taller than just this spindle lift and I'll wait and do all those afterwards because I want to see if these can go on just like I did with Larry with all the stock components and work great. So I did get the full kit, but this is essentially what you're paying for, these front spindles. We're gonna be having some new shocks finally because the ones that are in there currently are the stock ones that are just absolutely clapped out. So these are gonna probably make the truck ride even better than it does. And then we have rear lift blocks. So it's like a, Pretty small, maybe two inch, one, two inch block. New U-bolts, new bolts, everything, bushings. But for anyone new, the truck currently has two inch drop shackles in the rear, technically like one inch, that's how much it came out to. Just give it a more leveled look. I think it looks really good as is. So we got quite a lot of buildup under here and that top piece right there is torn so we definitely need to replace that. But, you know, just some old bushing, some grease buildup, but nothing looking too bad. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this side knocked out and then I'll have a good idea of exactly what to show you all the right way to do everything. All right guys, just got this side wrapped up and as you can see, we will definitely have to do some extended brake lines if we do go any taller, but fairly straightforward install. We'll go ahead and get the other one going, but let's check out a little side by side between the two. As you can see, the shaft is like just about at the bottom of the stock spindle, whereas this big boy, you see how far it's dropped down. So we'll put them side by side see how much taller that thing is so let's go ahead and drag these lights over there and we'll do a little walk through of how to get these babies installed dude look at this crap i'm sure these are the oem original from 99 you gotta take this brake line it's annoying because it has bolts on the back that you gotta hold so 11 or 7 16 all right so now to get the brakes off I don't know what size this is. I don't see on here where it says anything. We're gonna use this as a little cheater. Break it loose. One down below, and they got this little rubber cushion around them, so that kind of you've never done this it will seem like you're not gonna be at the right spot, but that's the right thing. So thankfully they're not on there real bad. Once you get them broken loose, you could do this step before, but once you got them. Once you got those bolts broken away, I'm gonna take this baby off. There's a million different ways you can get into this thing. People are gonna tell you different. I just find finding a little wedge to tap in there. Seems to be the easiest thing for me. Use your flathead, finish prying that out. Got this carter pin. I'm gonna try to straighten that out. 11 eighths on the big boy right here. I just try to remember how hard it was on there. It's how hard you wanna put it back. Compress your piston down some. All right, just wrap it up. All right, you can push this out a little bit, catch that bearing. There she comes. You just want to inspect that, make sure there's no bearings messed up and that it's full of grease. Now you got the three 
one halves right here. This one's just got a bolt on the back of it, so you don't have to take that off. Put that off to the side. We will have to take this. We can go ahead and do that now so I can show y'all. Hopefully y'all can see. Just to give us a little bit extra length. Peel that little metal tab back, so that, that you pull that out and gives you a little bit extra room. Golly, I'm getting old. My freaking knees are hurting. Getting this Carter pin bent back. 19 mil. There we go. So they say you can use whatever tool. I wouldn't recommend a sledgehammer like I got. I'd get a smaller one, but I couldn't find it, so be gentle with it. You can just put this top one right there at the spindle. Then it'll hold the resistance. Now we gotta try to find the Carter pins. We're gonna have a bolt. Well, this one and here. This one's facing up, this one's facing down. There's Carter pins in both of them. If you're like mine, you yucky and grimy. So we're gonna have to dig to try to find our Carter pins. One and one sixteenth. They come out of there pretty easy. Not gonna want to take them all the way out because we are gonna want to drop. Well, I guess you could take the bottom one all the way up. This top one, we're gonna have to hammer that facing each other so they are reversed. All right. We gotta get this to break free. You can use what you want. Uh, I prefer a good old hammer. up and then off she goes so nasty grimy yucky time to grab the new spindle this new spindle weighs a freaking crap ton just line your bottom one up get that on there And this kit says to cut out this little bump stop on the lower control arm. I'm not gonna do that. Get this freaking crap out of the way. Throw our carter pins in here. All right, go ahead and tighten down our sway bar. Right, sway bars on time to put the tie rod back on these things are gonna be it's gonna be so pigeon toed in you do want to grease up this bad boy back on it's kind of crazy this truck has 221,000 miles on it and the bearings are still good Larry's were too it's got 246,000 on it it's just People that say they didn't build these things to last, dude. Can't build everything to last, but a lot of stuff that could go wrong usually doesn't. Now 
Now once you get it on here, I don't know what it's hitting right now, but you kind of got to take these pins out and look down in there with a flashlight to line it up. That just took me entirely too long to line those stupid bolts up. I need to tighten this up. I wouldn't have forgotten it, but I almost forgot to film that. Also did forget to show y'all installing the front shocks. All you do is two bolts on the bottom, one bolt up top. The whole thing can slide down through the bottom, pop the new one in, tighten the bolts back down, you're good to go. See how high it's gonna take jacking this thing up to get the tires under. Let's see how close we are. Let's let her down and see how much, one, these tires straighten out, but also how much does it settle. Alright guys, so there's a very good chance I am going to install the rear lift on this thing after we get it out check it out. Uh, probably take the drop shackles out as well, but I wanted to, you know, give it a little squat look for the beginning and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I just got done putting one of the rear shocks in and there's about an inch of clearance, so not much. Here's the old stalker. <laughs> Absolutely clapped out. So let me show you. It's just a seven eighths bolt down here. You do have to hold it on both sides. And then what was this little guy? 14 I think up top it's the 14 up top two bolts you do have to hold those as well but looks good you can see there's a <laughs> that much gap before they bottom out so not very much at all like I said we probably will remove those drop shackles and probably will install that rear block all right this side had even more rim so this one's not even remotely close to bottoming out Oh yeah, that looks so much better, I can already tell. I'm about to go jump on the back of this thing and see. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. There's actually something we have to do on the front of the truck before we can even drive out of here. All right, so we got some pretty gnarly pigeon towing going on. It's crazy, Larry didn't do this at all. But dude, it sucked these jokers in, I guess that extra inch or maybe just the way that this suspension is we are gonna have to adjust our tie rods before we get anywhere because i don't even want to drive it down the road with that much toe in all right got it adjusted looking so much better ended up pushing i might bring this one back in it uh, looks pretty good maybe in a half a turn but i ended up bringing in this side or pushing it out nine full turns and this side, five full turns. I actually did 10 and six, and that's what looked right, but then I let it all the way down, and it was a little too much. But all you do is undo the two bolts on that, and then that whole thing spins, push it in or out, super easy. Uh, and this way, we're not gonna be like completely having a miserable drive to get it aligned. And it will actually be drivable, and you can really eyeball it pretty daggum good. There's ways you can measure it and stuff. You can look up how to do that if you want to do that, if you're not going to be able to get an alignment straight away. Dude, I'm freaking stoked. I'm trying to kind of tease y'all a little bit. But, um, yes, it looks so freaking good. And we'll we'll adjust, address the rear. So if you, if you don't love the squat, hang on. Maybe in the next video, maybe at the end of this video, we'll raise the rear up. You'll see. It's going to look sick. Everyone will be happy at some point. But anyways, I'm going to wrap it up for the night. Let's get this thing outside tomorrow. Check it out. So much better now.
guys, well there she is. Hopefully you did enjoy and hopefully the install video was adequate for y'all to know what you're gonna get yourself into. But yes, she is squatting a pretty good bit. So I did measure it and it came out to 36 and a half inches up front. So we gained a little bit over, if I remember the first number, a little bit over four inches of lift on this thing. So that's absolutely sick. I don't even know if that grenade thing worked, like if I was even used any of that footage, but good Lord, that was a mess. But uh, yeah, dude, it's so far, it's freaking sick. I'm gonna go take it for its first drive, probably do that in a different video. Um, but as far as just pulling it out here, it felt absolutely great. Uh, I know everyone's not gonna love the, the squat that's going on with it. It would definitely look more appealing with some better wheels and tires, uh, but we're, we're gonna raise the rear end of it up some, so don't worry about that. Do that in another video too, I'm sure. Um, I know we'll at least take the drop shackles out the rear and that should bring it up quite a bit, but just that that little lift dude it is like a whole nother truck with the spindle kit it does push out the front tire pretty much perfectly like you want it so when we do do the six load conversion on the front it will be poked out a little bit um and then it'll be perfect with some wheels and tires and then we'll well y'all we'll get into it but we're, we're gonna equal it up <laughs> this thing's pretty freaking low to the ground i'm not gonna lie um but yeah, dude, I'm excited to go take it for its first spin, see how it is with the all new struts or shock absorbers or whatever you want to call it. But dude, it's like a it's like a whole new truck, man. Just a little little suspension change. Got rid of the old rake, rocking the squat right now, and uh, we will of course do the six lug conversion on it, and then we'll be able to put different wheels and tires on it. We got three trucks, two good set of wheels. So that means, oh, I do have the Nittos, so that probably means another set of wheels inbound at some point. We'll have to see whether I will get them for this truck or whether I will get them for another truck and put one of those on here for permanent residence. But dude, it looks so freaking good from the front. It's got that tall stance. We don't have the bottom diffuser on the front bumper, so you can kind of see the control arms and stuff, but at this level, it, it doesn't look bad. You can just see them kind of creeping down. Um, if we did go any higher, I probably would put the little diffuser on there just to clean it up some. I don't really like being able to see the frame hanging down or stuff. That's why I'm not a fan of body lifts or anything. Definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you are a fan of this truck, but you want it leveled, comment that down below. If there's enough of them, I will put the lift on there. I'll take the shackles out. I'll do everything. So uh, definitely vote your side in the comments whether we should keep it squatted, throw some wheels and tires on it. Or level it up but with that being said hopefully you enjoy i'll see y'all in the next one all right in case i throw this under here and that burns the truck to the ground this was the plan do a smoke bomb i don't even know if this is going to work fuse didn't light i do have a lighter okay oh jeez. oh that looks sick <laughs> <laughs>